the one I want to concentrate on is the new color workspace. And look at this. For the first time, we can see multiple scopes on screen at the same time, and finally the scopes look useful. Let's just zoom this up. We've got a vector scope with both a 75% and 100% target. We've got all those ugly orange lines are gone. Look at the waveform monitor. I can read the waveform monitor and look at the texture in here. You got to admit the scopes in Premiere have been ugly for years and they look beautiful. In fact, when we go down to the wrench icon, we can turn on a histogram we can also turn on a parade. We can change a particular setting for the waveform. We can say we want it to be RGB, or which means it's showing color, or we can have it be YC, or we can have it be Luma. I prefer running my waveform with Luma settings, so I just see the grayscale and don't worry about the rest. We have also settings for the RGB parade. We have presets. We can say, show me the four scope layout in Premiere. And now we're seeing vector scope, waveform, parade, and histogram. These are just wonderful. I'm going to go back by turning some scopes off, cliff the wrench. I don't need to see parade because we're not doing color grading today. I don't need to see the histogram and I want to see the waveform in its Luma setting. But, oh, this is, this is just, ah, I've hated the scopes in Premiere since, like, forever. And this is just really, really cool. But it doesn't stop with the scopes. We now have the brand new Lumetri color panel, or Lumetri. Could be pronounced either way. I like making it sound European. We'll call it Lumetri. And we have a variety of things here. If I click on Basic Correction and I select a clip, Notice that I don't have to apply any color effects to the clip. Just selecting the clip automatically opens up all the settings that I can adjust for color. We've got the ability to import LUTs lookup tables, color lookup table, depending upon what it is that we're shooting, which is really nice. It makes it much easier to shoot RAW or log formats and have it automatically converted down to, to something that looks decent inside Premiere. We can change the color temperature by grabbing and making it bluer say you're shooting daylight exposed or tungsten exposed, and we can adjust that. By the way, to reset any of these, go to Effect Controls. There's the Lumetri color. You click here to reset everything, and notice that it's reset. Or we can reset individual settings by going into the individual settings. While we can make basic adjustments, including saturation, under the basic correction, there's nothing here to really write home about. The exciting part, click it again to close it, the exciting part comes with some of the other choices that are in this panel. Creative, for instance, allows us to pick a look. Say I want to have it be day for night, or I want to have it be like it's lit with the moon, or one of my favorites, Gold Western. Look at how that just brings out the, the richness of the color. Now, these are presets. You can actually create your own preset and save it should you want to. But there's a lot to choose from. Let's look at Norse. Oh, that's really just, ooh. I don't like it. I want to go back to the Gold Western. Let's, ah, looks much prettier. Anyway, if you want to take the look off, go back up and set it to none, and it's back to the normal look of the clip. You can adjust the amount of a look that's applied to a clip by sliding the intensity up and down. Where we have really cool controls, however, is in this area. We can give a clip a faded film look. We can sharpen. Now, be careful with sharpen. Use a, just a small amount of sharpening, if at all. Sharpen's going to make your edge detail stand out. It's going to make it, it tends to make things worse, not better. Just be cautious. Vibrance is really nice. It increases saturation without saturating skin tones, so it adds richness to the scene without making your actors look like they're sunburned. Saturation, on the other hand, increases the saturation of everything in the scene. We can change the tints of, a, of the shadow detail or the highlight detail. For instance, I could have the edge of the barn turn a little bit blue, the darker sides of it. In this case, we're going to reset all of this back to where we want it to be, which is off. And let's just scroll down, reset this one, reset that one, 
and the tints are okay. Let's click on creative to close it. Curves, this one. Oh my goodness, look at this. We've had curves for a while inside Premiere, but finally we've got an interface that makes a lot of sense. We can grab the grayscale curve and just pull it up, brighten the mids. We can grab the highlights and pull the highlights down, pull it way down, give ourselves a positively surreal look. This would be um, a horror film or a, uh, uh, a drug-induced state, whatever appeals to you. You can take and, and make the blue curve separate from the grayscale curve. We are completely out of control here, so let's uh, <laughs> let's just reset the curves back. But there's a really neat feature, there we go, which is this thing down here, which we've never seen in any editing package before. This allows me to change saturation by hue. I'm going to click a keyframe here and a keyframe here and pinch this in right there. Just pull that in. Click a keyframe here and click a keyframe here. And now what I've done is I've added a boost of saturation into the golds and up into the reds, but I've taken out any additional saturation for the blue. Look at how the sky has gone gray. Now, this is like a, a, a color mask, except we've got more control over what we're doing because we are we can set as many keyframes as we need, and what we're messing with is the saturation for that particular color. Or maybe what I want to do is bring out the trees. Bring out the trees. Anyway, I can find where the tree is, which is kind of a yellow-green, and we can make our trees stand out. Or I could increase the saturation. Let's just pull the blue down here, give ourselves a blue. You see what's possible here? Now, before we'd have to go to, to Resolve or maybe Speed Grade to be able to get this kind of control over specific saturation of different shades. But now we can mess with this ourselves inside Premiere without having to move to a different application, which I just am very impressed with. We'll reset this by clicking the Reset button for Hue and Saturation. We're back to normal. But there's still more click curves to hide it. We have color wheels. For instance, I want to have my shadows go to blue. I want to take my mid-tones to gold. And I can adjust the amount of my mid-toned settings. This is the changing the grayscale value. Changing the grayscale value of highlights to brighten or darken them. Changing the grayscale value of shadows. We can even add a vignette. When I click Vignette, let's dial in. I can add a Highlight Vignette, which is wonderful for weddings, or a Shadow Vignette, much more dramatic. We can change where the, 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 the amount of the vignette, a lot or a little. We can increase the roundness from pretty square to pretty round. And we can adjust the feathering from let's not feather at all to let's make this feathered a lot. Look at how we've been able to manipulate the color of this image in so many different ways that are now much more inherited in the clip. I don't have to add extra filters. I don't have to apply multiple filters. It's much easier to use. This thing is... I've been in love with the color correction features in Final Cut for a long time, but this finally gives us some real control over the color of our clip without having to step out to resolve or step out to speed grade. I am really, really impressed with what we can do with uh, the color panel inside the latest version of Premiere. It is really lovely. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 164. By the way, if you need to stretch your training dollars, a membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.